This is Sal here, and I'm, I have Dr. David Agus visiting the office. And I, I want you to introduce yourself, because you have kind of an interesting life. Uh, interesting life is scary, but I'm a professor of medicine and engineering at the University of Southern California. I treat cancer patients, and I have a lab that looks at new ways and technologies to understand and treat cancer. And that's what's really interesting, the, f the fact that you're a professor of both medicine and engineering, and I guess that's kind of what we're going to touch on a little bit here. Yeah. And so, so, so th this is clearly a picture of eggs. Why are we looking at eggs? Well, if you, I gave you those eggs, and I put them in your office, and I said, come back in three weeks, what would you have? In, if if I, I they, they would go bad. I'm not right. putting them in a the fridge, I'm assuming. I'm You'd just... have a rotten egg. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but if I was clever and I changed the temperature of your office to 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit and I rotated those eggs three times, it has to be an odd number, then at the end of three weeks, I'd have a chicken. At the chi so so this, that's what this other picture is. You'd have this. So you could either have a rotten egg, so this kind of crazy mess, smelly thing, mm -hmm. or you have this cute adorable chicken. Although they call babies chicks. Chicks. A baby or a chick. Uh, uh, yes. Yes. And so a small <laughs> change in temperature and gravity goes from chaos to order. Right. And right. so we're going to talk in a minute about cancer and all the chaos that's involved with it. But realize that that egg, I changed the temperature and the gravity and I went from chaos to order. So while it will seem incomprehensible and unable to model cancer, you're going to start to see little changes can have major effects. I see. And this is what's a little bit unintuitive. So when we think about things like cancer, I mean, cancer's mm -hmm. not the only one. We imagine, we imagine that we just have to kind of, we just have to kill it, or we just kind of have to take it out. But what you're saying is, hey, maybe there's these subtle things, analogous to rotating an egg uh, you know, three times and getting the temperature just right that can make it, make it automatically do different things. Exactly. To me, cancer is a verb, not a noun. So you're cancering. Cancering. When you have cancer. It's not that you have cancer, you're cancering. And so my goal is to change your state of your body from a cancering to a healthing. Right. And so the first question is, how do you quantitate the state? How do we say who and what you are? And so technology is giving us the opportunity to do that as we go forward. Right. I, I just want to get my head around that because that's just, you know, you never hear that word cancering. Right. I think you've probably invented that word <laughs> so, or helping. And, and it's, it's from the idea is, once again, when I imagine cancer, I think this is the way most researchers think about cancer. It's this, this set of cells that have just gone berserk and you have to remove them or kill them somehow or stop them from spreading. And, and what you're saying is, no, there's something going on systemically in your body that is cancering. It's allowing the cancer to thrive. That's it. So you just, your yeah. first definition of, you know, something you have to cut out, a different organism, that's bacteria. Right. That's an infection, right? So it's something from the outside comes inside of you. I give you the right antibiotic. It doesn't care if you're a man or a woman, you're a six feet or you're three feet. If that antibiotic targets the bacteria, it goes away. Right. The difference in cancer, it's your own cells that have gone a little bit crazy. Right. And so we have to change the interaction of the body and the cells in order to make that patient better. Right. Very different than something without. This is within. I see. And I'm just, you know, there's all sorts of, it's fascinating because there's all sorts of parallels in, in I guess, everyday life depending on, 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 your, on what you believe. But, you know, some people, if there's crime in an area, there's one point of view that you need to police it. You have to arrest all the criminals. Uh, but, but then, hey, maybe the criminals keep coming because there are certain environmental factors. Maybe there's just a lot of poverty and there's lack of education. and there's So, so you're saying, hey, let's look at the things systemically. As I'm saying to just, put some lights in the area, yeah. you know, put some police driving by, then all of a sudden the crime level goes down. Right, right. It's, it's not just about arresting the criminals. Exactly. It's about preventing Let me tell crime. you about a clinical trial that yeah. was done a couple of years ago. It's yeah. the coolest clinical trial. Yeah. And they took women after optimal therapy for breast cancer. And these were women who were premenopausal, so right. really aggressive breast cancer. Right. Half of them, after treatment, got placebo, and half of them got a drug that builds bone. Interesting. So, so let, me see, let me write this down. So this is breast cancer. So these are, these are people. These you, are young women young. with breast cancer. Right, right. And so. Uh, and uh, half got a placebo, which means just like a, a sugar pill. Sugar pill. Like, and that you give that to, to patients just to make them think that they might, because sometimes the psychological impact might right. be. And this was ethical. And it's yeah. very important to talk about whether it was ethical or not. It was ethical right. because they already got their treatment for breast cancer. Right. And normally in those women, we just wait and hopefully they're cured and we see if it may recur. Right. So in those women, we divided them into half. And right. half we gave this pill that right. was a placebo. Right. And half we gave a drug for osteoporosis that builds bone. 
osteoporosis. You say, why are you wasting someone with breast cancer's time by giving them a drug yeah. that uh, 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 targets bone? Right, right, the right. The reason is breast cancer metastasizes to bone. And it's metastasizes, it spreads to bone. It that's spreads what, to and bone. And that's when cancer just goes. That's right, what it goes to the bone. It likes right. the bone. Right. So the argument, if I change the soil, the seed won't grow. So remember, when you have a garden, you can either right. give fertilizer or make that soil so right. the tomato plants love it. Right, right, right. And so that's what we're doing here. We're making the bone different. Right. And so once again, this is the system th thinking is that before, if you have these breast cancer cells that are just growing, the view is, hey, let's irradiate them. Let's slice them out. Let's get chemicals that will be toxic to these cells and kill them. What you're saying is cancer really starts to, to become a, a real negative once it spreads. And what you're saying is let's keep it from spreading where it, maybe where it's most common to spread, which is in, in the bone. So instead of, so before the bone drug, the cancer spread, the, the cancer could kind of take root, could take root in the bro bone and then start spreading and mm -hmm. metastasis, or it, this is what metastasis is. Mm -hmm. And instead you're saying maybe if you have this special drug, this osteoporosis drug, it makes the bone that much stronger and less susceptible to this type of thing, and then it just, that, that won't be able to happen. Exactly. Right, right, fascinating. So fascinating. at the end of that trial, the cancer recurrence was reduced by 40%. Wow. At the end of that trial, new breast cancer, so a separate breast cancer, because once you have one breast cancer, you can get another breast cancer. That was down by 35%. Wow. So this notion of changing the systems. So remember, this is a drug that didn't even touch the breast cancer, yeah. had a dramatic effect in the survival of these young women. Right, right. And so again, it just makes us a whole new way of thinking about disease. Right, right. And so I guess what, what would be the, so if, if we were to put words on things, the way that most of people think about disease right now, you call it kind of a reductionist, or redu where yeah. they're, they're just trying to focus on one narrow part of it. They're trying to focus on this thing right over here. And you're, you're advocating for kind of a more systemic way of thinking about it, where you think about everything that this might involve or that might affect it. It's so wild is that for the last uh, several decades, we're trying to focus on the individual cell yeah. and then the individual gene and then the piece of a gene. And we forgot to take that step back and look at the whole system. Yeah. And so remember the cancer is your normal cell that's gone a little bit crazy. Right. So we have to model that whole system and figure out a, a way to control it so the cancer won't like it. Wow, fascinating, fascinating. And then you actually have, we have pictures of what some of these things look like. So what, what is this right over here? So this is a, a liver that's taken out of a patient, right. and the white spots there are colon cancer that's metastasizes, again, spread to the liver. Right, so it's, it's, it's a cancer that grew up in the, in the colon, mm -hmm. and at some point it, it was able to spread and kind of liberate itself and then attach on to the liver, and that's what, it's metastasized to the liver, and now it's kind of growing in this, it looks, at least from this picture, kind of a cauliflower-like shape. Exactly, exactly. And then if I showed this to a surgeon, or someone who normally operates on livers, they would know right away, hey, that looks like colon cancer gone to liver. Right, right. And if you look at the next picture on the right, right. that's colon cancer inside of a lymph node under a microscope. And this is, these are, these are the lymph? Those are the normal lymphs. Lymphs, and this right here is the colon cancer? Exactly. Okay. And so any pathologist would look under a microscope and they would make a diagnosis, say, hey, this looks like colon cancer gone to the lymph. Right. And in the bottom is a different way of looking at cancer, which is a CAT scan. Right. So this is basically a three-dimensional x-ray where I took a slice right in the middle of that person's body. Right. And those translucent areas in the middle there are colon cancer metastasis. This? Those darker areas, yes. Yeah. Okay. And so what's amazing is... That's in their liver. Colon cancer looks a certain way. In right. In the lymph node, right. in the liver, on a CAT scan. Right. And it always looks that way. Right. The body doesn't care what the underlying genetics are because the genetics are dramatically different patient to patient to patient but it always looks the same. I see. So right, somehow right. evolution is selecting out for phenotype, which is what right. things look like, not necessarily for genotype. Which is their actual, the DNA that makes up exactly. what they are. Right, and right. so we're focusing on genotype, and right. genotype is very important, and it's gonna give us some understanding over time, but we have to also take that step back and look at the phenotype, and right. look at what it looks like, and trying to change those interactions. Remember, if a patient has early cancer, right. we've learned a lot in the last 10 years. Right. So if you have early cancer, and I cure you with surgery, the day before surgery, I can always find cancer cells in the blood, wow. even though you were cured. Right. So the old days, we thought, well, you have to wait till it goes out through a bloodstream and gets out there. That's wrong. Right. It's can it live outside that original organ? I see. So there's someone who's 
cured or they're they're not cancering right now. Mm -hmm. And there is actually cancer in their blood. There's but but because they're healthy now or healthier or they're healthing, or I guess how you want to right. talk, that cancer isn't able to take hold. And those cells, yeah. they can't live anywhere but the colon. Fascinating. So it looks into this experiment. Yeah. This is the wildest experiment. They took a mouse, yeah. and they took breast cancer, and they put it in the left breast and the right breast. Yeah. And they colored them red and green, the cells. Right. They waited a day, they went back, and the cells were half red, half green, half red, half green. Because we always thought of cancer as something in one local spot. Right. But really is a disease that keeps going through the bloodstream. And it likes those breasts. That's why it keeps going right. back there. So that's interesting. When I always think of metastases, and I can never say, say the word, I always imagine, okay, that's the cancer that's finally gotten to the lymph network. It's finally gotten to the blood vessels and now it's spreading. But you're saying that there's actually often cancer that has gotten to the to the transportation networks of the body, but it, it, it has still not metastasized because it's not able to take hold yet. Exactly. That's fascinating. Exactly. And over time, we're going to get the technology to interrogate those cells to say, hey, this one can take hold here, therefore I have to change where it would take hold. Right. We're just at the beginning of that technology that's going to change everything. And, and the reason why we're looking at looking at these, the fact that the colon cancer starts in the colon, and this is how it looks when it spreads to different parts of the body. Mm -hmm. What you're saying is, is that we, we shouldn't maybe be so fixated on just the DNA of colon because of colon cancer because it can be very different from one patient to the next but maybe on the kind of its macro behavior its phenotype how it looks and how it behaves and that that way we might be able to uh, it'll give us clues maybe on how we can change it exactly fascinating well thanks a bunch this is very interesting